Hi, I'm Dr. Eddie Ryan. I specialize in diabetes and pregnancy, and today we're going to talk about type 1 diabetes and pregnancy. Women with type 1 diabetes can have a healthy baby, can have a great pregnancy, but the ideal is that to see their healthcare provider before conception. At that time, there's a number of things to be talked about, including the mother, the baby, and the insulin, and what happens medications. Let's talk about them. Anyone who's got type 1 diabetes for a while has a risk of diabetes complications. And the four main ones that we worry about are eye disease, kidney disease, nerve damage, and blood vessel damage. The risk of change in the eyes ranges from 10 to 50%. It's 10% if there's no damage there at the start of the pregnancy. It's 50% if there's a lot of damage there at the start of the pregnancy. The eyes need to be watched carefully during pregnancy to make sure none of these changes are occurring. The kidneys behave much the same way. If there's no kidney damage at the present, the risk of rising blood pressure, leakage of protein from the urine, is about 10%. But if there's a lot of kidney damage present at the start, it goes up to 60%. Normally this damage regresses back to where it was before pregnancy at the end of the pregnancy. But if there was a lot of damage there at the beginning of the pregnancy, then the kidneys get worse, but don't quite come back to where they were at the beginning of the pregnancy. Nerve damage tends to stay just the same throughout the pregnancy. There is a risk, however, of carpal tunnel syndrome. That's when you get pain and tingling in the hands. Normally a splint is used and it gets better after the baby is born. Circulation problems tend to hold just steady during pregnancy. Cholesterol and triglycerides rise during pregnancy, but we can't use the medicines for them, so normally most people don't measure them. In terms of the baby, there's two critical periods. The first is the first six to eight weeks, and that's when the baby is being formed. If the sugars are high at that time, there is a risk of a congenital malformation. These are serious things. These are heart defects, kidney defects, spinal issues. And it's directly related to the blood sugars. If your A1C is under 7, there's no increased risk. If it's over 7, there is an increased risk. And that's why it's so important to be seen before conception to get that blood sugar controlled and the A1C under 7. For the rest of the pregnancy, there are hormones coming from the placenta that raise the blood sugar. And that sugar goes into the baby. The baby converts the sugar into it's as if the baby converts the sugar into fat, so these babies can get too big, making for a more difficult birth for both the mother and the baby. The baby also gets used to that high sugar, so after birth it's as if it's in withdrawal. It can have a low blood sugar, hypodysemia. The baby is also more prone to jaundice. I've never seen a baby born with diabetes because the mother has type 1 diabetes. Actually, in the long term, the risk for the baby developing diabetes is 1.6%, as long as the father didn't have diabetes. In terms of what happens the insulin during pregnancy, during the first 14 weeks, the insulin requirements may actually drop. People when they become pregnant want to control the blood sugar, so they're being very attentive to their diabetes, and they may end up with hypodysemia, so have to be careful of that. During the rest of the pregnancy, those hormones from the placenta raise the blood sugar, so the insulin requirements increase and increase and increase. In fact, the hardest thing for a person with type 1 diabetes is this constant changing of the insulin. Most people with type 1 diabetes are used to making a change, waiting a few days, waiting another few days, but in pregnancy, one ups the insulin, ups the insulin, ups the insulin, and it'll rise maybe one and a half to twofold what you were on pre-pregnancy. In terms of other medications, drugs commonly used in diabetes are the statins to control the cholesterol, they're not recommended to be taken during pregnancy, so they're normally stopped pre-pregnancy. And blood pressure medications such as the ACE inhibitors or the ARBs, they're also stopped pre-pregnancy because they're harmful for the baby. There are other drugs that can be used to control the blood pressure. Finally, it's important that everyone who's pregnant is taking a prenatal vitamin. And if you have diabetes, it's recommended that you take extra folic acid, five milligrams extra of folic acid, at least for the first trimester. I can't promise anyone who has type 1 diabetes that they'll have a healthy baby. But I do know that if there's no major diabetes complications present, and the, that if the blood sugars are controlled, the chance of a healthy baby is the same as if they didn't have diabetes. And that's not bad.